Hey, Don Copeland here today, and we're not going to print anything. We just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a couple of different decoration processes we offer here from Coldesi, and uh, kind of help you wrap your head around what do I need, what do I would fit best in my business with my applications and uh, the, the concerns I have for my business. We're going to start off, with, today we're going to be talking about UV printing and about the white toner printers, the digital heat effect solutions we have. Um, you know, we have three options over there. We have four options in the UV marketplace. So let's find out what makes the most sense for your business. And at the end, you just might be surprised at what you find out as well. So let's start off, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the UV printers. I'm standing here in front of our 1200S, kind of the big boy of the group, but we have three other units, the 600S from uh, Compress, the uh, Muto 461 and 661s. So we have quite a selection of them. And we've picked out here some representative items that would be things that you would want to have a UV printer for that aren't really, doesn't make sense to do with the digital heat effects type of solution. Uh, we've got core plus signs, very popular. Uh, nowadays, people doing graduation signs. You know, you see them all of the time for real estate applications. Um, in the marketplaces where people are trying to set up signs for, hey, pick up delivery here, things like that. Golf tournaments, right? If you've ever been in a golf tournament, every hole has got a hole sponsor, right? All of those type of things. Core Plast signs are a great application for it. Certainly, it's not something you're going to do on a, on a toner-based printer because uh, this isn't going to go through the printer, number one, <laughs> size-wise. Uh, number two, I'm pretty sure it would melt. And uh, in the laser printer, you actually have the the media goes around through like this, and then you would have to try to heat press this afterwards, and the heat press process is a lot more intense than the, the UV lamp process would be. Another application would be cardboard. It's a cardboard box that we printed directly onto. You can see if we open this up, we actually did it when it was all completely disassembled. Again, not something that you would do with really any other printing method other than UV. It's the most common way to do it is to do UV to print on a pre-assembled box like that. And everybody does car mats, right? Don't you all do car mats? Uh, this is a car mat, uh, the actual car mat for, uh, from Mark's vehicle here. We printed directly onto this with a UV printer. Uh, we have somewhere around here, oh, uh, look at that. One I just realized we didn't pick up, core mats, right? Again, you wouldn't be able to do a transfer on this. This is very hard to print on, on any other method other than directly with a UV printer or with a process like screen printing because this is a, a, a coarse fiber. And if you try to put something solid like a transfer onto this, it just isn't going to work. It's not going to attach. It's going to bridge across and whatnot. Here, this is just a standard aluminum sign, right? Not something that would be easy to do with most methods. You might, you, you could probably do this with cut vinyl, but it'd be a lot of work to, to, to mask this off and apply it and get it consistent there. Perfect application of UV, especially if you're doing customized type of stuff. If I'm gonna do a thousand of these, I wanna screen print them, all right? Wooden sign, size of this, again, similar to like with the uh, core plast sign. Not gonna be able to do this with a toner based system. All right, you're also going to have a real challenge because this actually has a texture to it. This is like a rough type of board. You can have a texture like that. If you try to do a transfer process to anything like that, you're going to have a challenge. You're even in some cases going to have a challenge of having too much texture if you try to screen print to it because it's going to hit and it's going to run in those gaps. Whereas in here, when you UV print with it, the ink hits the surface, the lights immediately set it so you don't have to worry about any run, especially in those areas we have like ridges and whatnot. Another application, cell phone cases. And they're, they come in a thousand different types of materials. Here are just a couple of examples. This is a standard print. One thing to look at that you see that you get here, a little bit of a wrap around the edges. You're not going to get that with a transfer process. And you also have the ability, if you want to zoom back in there, to create textures. You should be able to see in there the actual weave pattern. Again, not an application for a transfer process. And if you want to use your choice of a cell phone case, you're going to have to do a method like this. You know, there are sublimation based cases and stuff out there, but you're not going to be able to get it for every phone and every style. You know, if you want to X brand, you know, uh, an otter box, let's say, right? You can buy an otter box and you embellish it, right? You're not just going to go buy a generic 
thing that's the same as an OtterBox. So this is a great application for it. Again, you wouldn't do it with transfers. Acrylic. This is a back printed acrylic ward. You can see the white on the back. And then actually have the color on the front. Now you can do this with a white toner base system, but it's pretty dadgum tricky to be able to do it. And this is so much quicker, so much easier, less expensive application here. Everybody uh, wants to decorate their ping pong balls, right? I'm just going to tell you, these don't do well in a heat press. We'll just leave it at that. Same thing with the golf balls. All right, we have a cold SE logo there. I think we have yeah, the compress logo there. Applications that are just totally perfect for, for UV. There's no way you're going to do this number of colors, this kind of detail with a standard processes like pad printing or anything without going broke or having to do thousands and thousands and thousands of them to push to make it make sense. Printing on a pre-shaped, this is a canvas, it's already pre-framed. Got this from Michaels. I like to think of Michaels as a UV printable store because <laughs> about 80% of the stuff that you can find in there, we found ways to print on. And this is actually a textured print. You can actually see from the back, you might be able to see in there, you can actually see where the ink itself actually drew up the, the canvas a little bit where we did a texture. So everything that you see here looks like shells and whatnot. It's got some texture to it. Up in here is smooth. You wouldn't be able to do that with a transfer process or any other type of printing process without doing something physically to the surface prior to printing it. Up on the back here, we have a really big acrylic, all right? And that's in the same concept as the Jane Smith uh, award that we showed you. And it's cool because you're actually able to, because of what we were able to do with the UV printer for printing out on the bed, for targeting, we we're actually able to take the actual file that was used to cut that out with a laser and print that outline on the bed so that we could target it so we were exactly able to center that character right up in the middle of it. And so kind of summing up the, the UV side of it, and, and this has got to do just about any type of uh, a decoration equipment, apparel decoration equipment, sign making equipment, whatever it is, all right? Over my 30 or so years in this industry, there's always been a trade-off. Low cost of output, generally higher cost of equipment. Higher cost of output, lower the cost of the equipment. It is just some balancing act there. Uh, you know, we all would like to think that we'd come up with the most expensive, most inexpensive piece of equipment that uses the least amount of consumables or price wise and come out with a great result. It's not generally the case. Items like this sign, this sign costs us about a dollar and twenty five cents to print. All right. And you come down to items like the golf ball and the, the ping pong ball, there's, it's almost not a number. It's like a tenth of a penny or so on those to print. So that's a big trade-off you'll start to see when we start to look at some of the comparisons to a lower price solution like the digital heat, heat effects system where the equipment is less expensive, but the consumables are higher. So that's going to be part of what we weigh in on of what makes sense for my business. If you don't have a budget of you know, $45,000, $48,000, then maybe you need to look at a smaller UV printer, lower down the food chain, or you may need to go to one of the digital heat effects things to get things launched and to get you started and allow your market to tell you which way to go. Okay, so we've talked a bit about the UV printer range, and I think I maybe just briefly touched on the price range. You're looking at a UV printer in the range that we offer from our the 461, the, the Muto uh, Expert Jet 461 is kind of our starting machine, a little over $20,000, up through our big boy, the uh, Compress IUV 1200S, which is anywhere from $45,000 to $49,000 or so. Dollars. And then we'd come over to the digital heat effects solution, which are our white toner based lasers. We offer three models. Uh, they range from as low as, you know, for just the printer itself, about $5,000 on the i550, up to the 9541, which you, you can spend fourteen fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 on a full solution package with that, all right? So, the, as you can see, the price range, you know, you want to go from extreme, we have 5000 to 50000 <laughs> basically. So, obviously, when you're in business, part of your decision-making process has to be based on your, your budget, okay? Um, however, it starts to gray somewhat in there. Let's say you're looking at a 9541 system to try to do rigid goods and things like that. Well, a five or $6,000 bump, and you're into a, 46, a 461 of the MUTOs that, that will 
maybe give you more versatility and certainly that gap narrows very quickly as we talked about when you started to weigh in on consumables. So let's talk a little bit about the things that you would, if your business is leaning into, that probably this is where you want to start, which is digital heat effects. Uh, as you see, a lot of items up here aren't rigid goods, which most of everything we showed you over for the UV printer were rigid goods. You know, we've got a hat here, which is done with digital heat effects. And in short run, there's no graceful way to do it, <laughs> you know, uh, other than a transfer system like this. You can do embroidery, but the, um, the process of embroidery involves digitizing, which, is, which has some, some uh, challenges to it. And embroidery is not fast, right? So to do, if I were to try to embroider that, it would probably cost me $10 to get it digitized or take 15 minutes of my time to digitize it. And it would probably take eight or 10 minutes to sew this hat, all right? I can do probably on the smallest printer, I could probably get a dozen of these on, and the biggest printer I'd probably get 20 on a page, right? And process the page all at one time, and then just cut these out and keep the transfers available when you need to do reorders for the customer, and bang, you're ready to go. Another application, great application for the digital heat effects is the sliding shirt trick. Um, is the flags, you know, like the flags you wear, you drive with on your car for your kid's football game or college team, something like that. No graceful way to decorate these things. Uh, short of doing huge quantities of them screen printed or actually dyed into the fabric, right? So this is a great application for, for short run type of stuff. Just think about that little league kids, you know, football and stuff like that, you have flags, you know, it allows them to feel like they're the big leagues. Cups, mugs, all right? Two examples. Oh, this is a really cool application. To me, this is probably one of the coolest digital heat effects applications. The ability to take a non-specialized mug, right, that doesn't have to have any special coding or anything like that, and put a full color graphic onto a dark colored one. Every other method you'll see is light, right? Secondarily, you can't do these on DTG. I could print on these materials if it wasn't for this clunky handle in the way. It, keeps, it doesn't allow, on, on the UV, it doesn't allow it to turn fully, which is what we need to be able to print on that type of material. Speaking of drinking, koozies, right? Koozies can be done a lot of ways. You could do a koozie with a UV printer. A uh, couple of challenges. Number one, the flexibility of it. Um, number two is because there's heat associated with the, the printer as the lights go over, this type of material is hard to keep flat and it's going to want to pop up. And so it could cause a challenge that way on UV. However, with this, you just generate a page full of transfers again, trim them down, heat press them on, perfect application, because you're going to flatten them anyway. This is something to insert so it doesn't flatten. Another cooler, a couple of coolers here we've done. This is one of the uh, applications that, this is absolutely a material I could print on with a UV printer. However, this is absolutely a material I really don't want to print on with a UV printer because it's reflective, really reflective. Especially, you see, this has a bevel on the edges as the UV light lamps are coming across as I'm printing, that light's going to be bouncing over, all over the place inside the machine, and eventually you're going to have places where it actually reflects light back up onto the, the, the print head, and which is, can cause extra maintenance issues. And if it was done regularly, if I was doing these things on a regular basis with a UV printer, I would be replacing print heads on a much regular basis. However, when you're doing it with the digital heat effects, print it, page full of transfers, cut them out, heat apply it, perfect application for it. All right, so just kind of do a recap here. Digital heat effect solutions start at about 5,000, go up to about 15,000, all right? UV solutions start at about 20, 21,000, up to, you know, around 50. You can go a little over 50, depending on what options and whatnot you get. Um, so there's a pretty wide gap range there. However, there's a decent area where there's not a huge gap between say the most expensive digital heat effects and the, the entry level or the most, least expensive of the UV printers. So what you gotta do now is start to weigh in from what we've talked about is where is my application? And there's a fair amount of overlap application. We kind of tried to show you when we're at each location the uniquenesses of each of these type of processes. But there's a lot of overlap. And so what you then you got to weigh in is, okay, what's my budget I have set for this, right? What tolerance do I have for the cost of consumables? Because the cost of consumables, if it's something you're doing a lot of and you're going to continue to do a lot of for a long period of time, and you take something that on a digital heat effects might cost you a dollar and a half, two dollars to do, 
we're going to do for, in many cases, pennies on, on a UV printer. However, if you're only going to use your, uh, your solution seven, eight, nine, ten times a month, right? It's kind of hard to have $50,000 sitting there invested in something that's only bringing in $5,000, $4,000 a month worth of revenue, right? Whereas you can have one of these sitting here and it's not so much of a pain. You may be paying a dollar extra per item to, to decorate it, but you're not paying you know, the extra $20,000, $30,000 for the equipment that it might expense. If you need to do apparel, absolutely, a digital heat effect solution is a better solution than UV. And now, now's when we start to do this balancing act. You really probably need to look at both, right? Based on how your business is structured, where you're wanting to go with your business, it might make more sense to say, hey, I need to get myself the high-end, the 9541 digital heat effects and the entry-level UV461 from MUTO, right? Because that way I can pick up both ends and it's still going to be less than investing into the largest UV. Or maybe you have a need to do a lot of coroplast signs, a lot of wood signs, metal signs, a lot of sign stuff. So it makes sense to buy the high end, the, the compressed 1200 or and then add just a 550, right? The I-550 here, $5,000 if you already have a heat press and you're up and going, you're in business. So there is an application for both of them. You know, We've talked about this a lot of times before. You are no longer defined as a screen printer, an embroiderer, you know, a t-shirt guy. You are an idea guy, not a trophy guy. You are people who help people get their ideas across and your customers are going to other places to get all of these things done. You might as well offer as much as you can and try to get for your money the best application to give the, your customers what they're looking for.